We did this in physics for many years. It is very good. It's very powerful. For students, especially in middle school, for students to actually remember what they're learning, I think, and also to make applications to it. They really got to experience it. Where should I have to be for this very first one? Anytime you can engage students in the learning process, it makes learning fun. We're looking for the acceleration as we're changing the maps. What I wanted to apply for and was specifically uh, to get equipment that allows kids to monitor both motion and forces. So with all the technology that we have, we were missing some pieces that would allow students to be more hands-on and to interact with the curriculum that's being delivered to them. This is a motion sensor which allows instant data reading for determining the distance to something. What this allows is this allows instantaneously to get a graph of whatever data you're looking at or whatever motion you're looking at. We're trying to m mimic this graph right here with this. So it senses our motion. So if you do this, then it shows up on the graph. I still have them hand time, I still have them hand measure, I still have them determine the velocity of something. I think that's still important so this doesn't overrule that in the sense of saying, oh just use technology because then they don't understand what it's doing. It's very interesting because I don't think that it's possible to do it otherwise. Technology is expensive. You're talking about $100 a sensor. You've got to have every every group of kids have it. You're talking about 16 sensors and right there is $1,600 and you're going, yeah, I don't think any budget I've got has that. This is 0 0.13 and we want 0 0.20. And I think the, the generosity essentially of having that money for our district is phenomenal. If we measure the acceleration of a cart with uh, one brick, and then we measure the acceleration of a cart with two bricks, then we can find how the acceleration is like affected by that. For us, it's amazing because it's something we don't have. Uh, when our curriculum changes and readopts every so many years, pieces come and go in the processes, and this isn't a piece that comes with it. So it's a piece that when we were looking at the technology go, how else could we make this even better? First and foremost, I want students to have evidence when they make a claim. So when students are claiming that uh, the acceleration goes down or when this happens, I should see this on a graph, they should have some evidence of that. Mass really affects how like fast it goes. Go. It really is able to give us some data. And it stops on some. Then information that we're allowing them to use a much, much higher level of learning. Don't let that force change on your finger it does make them more prepared for using graphs and using interfacing with computers, which I think is pretty important right now in our society. If we put two bricks on, we need to pull it with the same force. You need something sensitive enough to measure small changes in a small object's motion. And we, we simply can't do that with a, you know, anytime you hand time something, you're going to be off by 0.2 seconds with your reaction time. Switch rolls, because that's off the good. This then allows the speed up process to say, what happens when you walk towards it? What happens when you're going away? What happens when you're picking up speed? What happens when you're slowing down? And this allows instantaneous looking at the graph and analyzing the graphs, which is a higher level of learning. Ready? Mm -hmm. Go. This isn't something that, uh, is going to last one year, two years, or four years. This should last at least a decade, if not two decades. We can still teach the unit without the probes. However, if you look long term and, and what engages students in their learning is the hands-on piece. And when they can actually do it and show their own data from table to table or group to group and then present it, it's their findings. If we were walking and we would have to like use a stopwatch and a meter tape and then we'd have to do a bunch of formulas to find this out, but then we can, but with the sensor, we can like clearly see the differences. That piece uh, is huge. That's what scientists do. That's what engineers do. That's one of the standards we have, uh, and that's one reason the next generation science standards, uh, to me at least, is so successful.